Soul 2014, World Final League of Legends, 40,000 fans, Imagine Dragons playing. I think that was a huge statement saying this is legit. Esports are going to be more prolific than traditional sports. Viewership is increasing and investment is increasing. More brands that are not native to gaming getting involved. I think the stigmas melted away essentially. Esports and gaming is an unstoppable force. To be that one thing that everyone can be a part of. It feels like it's been a massive, crazy journey, but it also feels like it was yesterday. Esports 10 years ago was an interesting place because you had Korea, which was the, the global hub of esports, and it was massive. Uh, esports in Korea has always been big for years now, but in the West, it was kind of just around, um, fueled by the passion of gamers, really. StarCraft 1 Brood War is probably the first ultra competitive international title. Counter Strike 1.6, Quake 3, CPMA. I've got a special place in my heart for Call of Duty 4 Pro Mod on PC before it moved over to the console sphere. It was much more niche. It was a very key core group that cared about esports, but the standard young person didn't really watch competitive gaming. The streaming platforms that we have now just weren't around. The experience of, of people working in the scene just wasn't there yet. Paying out of your pocket to go to events. Problematic tournament organizers. And, and to this day, there are some professional players who won international circuits who were just not paid. Pretty much doing full-time hours coaching without pay. Uh, and that was the reality of esports. Connectivity issues were a thing, you know, riots, very, very famous, 2012 collapse. They didn't have a tournament realm and it was relying on internet. When the internet dropped, you can't continue your tournament. The fan base was there, but it just, it didn't have enough kind of support to scale up. Everything was really difficult about esports in the start, I think. So I got into esports about five years ago and it came off the heels of just honestly being a big fan. Uh, I cold emailed the CEO of Riot Games. There were some issues going on with some of their teams and some teams needed to sell or wanted to sell and the rest is sort of history. Uh, so day one of Misfits we had five players, a couple of subs, me, uh, one manager on site and Ben and that was it. We were at the time in the Challenger League looking to promote to the Professional League called the EULCS at the time. And winning Challenger and making that promotion was everything. It was it was make it or break it. Uh, and we did. I mean, what was my first impression of Misfits Gaming? Uh, I had very low expectations. This was uh, an organization that was new to the space. They had a group of players that were not particularly well known. Over the course of their debut year in the ULCS, they were pretty good. But again, my expectations were always low. The thing that cemented them in my mind was at the World Championship in China. Despite having a roster of rookies, uh, despite having people from all different backgrounds, our goal was to make worlds. And we did. We did anything and everything that was needed to make sure that we succeeded competitively. Not only did this team qualify out of groups and, and make it into the playoff stage, they also took the number one team in the world to five games. They should have won that series. In game four, with a, a, a lead of two to one in the score and a three to one being victory for them, they made an individual mistake that cost them. And then it cost them game five and it cost them the series. I will forever remember that moment. Uh, Misfits Gaming at the World Championship in China uh, blew my mind. They surprised everyone. They impressed Europe. They, they built a huge fan base for themselves. It was a very special moment that will stay with me for a long time. So the ecosystem of esports has shifted quite a lot in the last year and, and, and also the last two years. Franchise leagues popping up in multiple games. Uh, the infrastructure requirements from orgs have changed. You can't just cobble up a bunch of people, throw them in the team house, um, and then call yourself a pro team anymore. I joined Misfits Gaming right after Misfits had made it to quarterfinals. The one goal we had that year was basically make it into franchising. That was pretty much it. It was it was win or get as far as we possibly can and make it into franchising. So at the time, we weren't really thinking about things so much. Like it was literally just impress Riot. So all we were doing were making player stories and really focusing on building our brand at the time. And that's where a lot of the brand and Danny came from during that period. Every single year it gets more and more, I would say sustainable, more and more investment from folks. You have leagues that are doing a better job of monetizing them. Esports Pro's sole job is no longer just to compete. There's sponsor obligations, there's content obligations. 
um, there's growing their brand. Um, there's just so much more. The people that are kind of leading the charge are also learning what needs to happen for the industry to grow. Where we've really done, I think, a great job is diversified ourselves within the gaming and esports ecosystem. We went into Overwatch back in 2017 because, first of all, we loved the game. And second of all, we loved the structure that Activision Blizzard was creating. It was the first franchise league, our first opportunity to really put this thesis about league revenue share and media rights and sponsorships really to test. Up until that point, esports were these fractured leagues where you might get some money from the publisher, you may have to go on your own and get your own sponsorship money. There, there really wasn't anything formal around everything. Yeah, my first impression of Mayhem was definitely like, we have a lot of work to do here. They were not a good team, uh, season one. Uh, how do we turn the Overwatch brand around? We hired more staff who were more passionate about what they were doing and put more trust in them. Mayhem has grown so much and changed so much as I've been here. Um, I've been very fortunate to be able to shape roster-wise, personnel-wise, um, and I think we're at you know a really, really good place. Yeah, I think the results speak for themselves. We've grown and we've changed um, for the better. Another really big turning point in Misfits Gaming Group's history was when we acquired Call of Duty. We went into Call of Duty quite simply because Call of Duty is one of the biggest games in the world. You know, we are super excited about the future of the Call of Duty League, and that league is only just beginning. Ben Spoont, CEO, reached out to me and recruited me, actually. He wanted someone to come in with a competitive background. Here we finished third out of 12, and we won the second most number of tournaments and finished third overall in league points. I would just like to be a competitive roster and have a good set of guys, which I do. I've been fortunate enough to be watching and competing and playing um, in the esports sphere for nearly two decades. And over the course of the last 17 or 18 years that I've been involved, it's been exponential growth year on year, and that hasn't changed yet. We've gone from one title in, in Europe uh, in League of Legends to three franchises, five different titles as of the recording of this video. When I joined, we went from literally having the Berlin office as pretty much the only physical entity we had, you know, equipment was stored in a corner. And now we have a global company with multiple departments, a, a huge headquarters in Florida, 18,000 square foot, and I have a massive studio in there. There have been some rapid and insane growth and changes over that period of time. To that end, we've launched a couple different initiatives. We launched the first eSports and Gaming Exclusive Incubator, where we will be selecting and announcing this fall our first five investments that are going to be incubated down here in South Florida. There seems to be new doors opening all the time, and it's honestly quite insane to be part of such a, an early stage of what's going to be the future of entertainment, basically. And I think it's really important that big players like Riot Games, like Misfits, like Valve, like Activision Blizzard, anybody who has an established footprint and a foundation in the markets, they have to be the guiding light for everybody else. That has the betterment of everybody involved at its heart. To me, the vision for the company is to keep leading the way, to keep broadening our horizons, to make sure that Misfits Gaming is the spot for anyone and everyone that wants to be a fan of esports, regardless of their background. I want to see esports keep its personality, keep its fun, um, keep its entertainment. Whenever something gets really big, it sometimes loses that spark that it had, you know? And I think that is the most important thing. We keep that flame, that soul alive, that passion for the game. As long as we have the right people, you know, making these decisions, like the right people driving content forward, the right people um, inspiring everyone else. I think that we can, I think we can keep that in life.